I think what really excites me about what I do is the opportunity to rally very diverse groups of people around bold and uh, exciting ideas about conservation and natural resource production uh, and then seeing all the tangible successes occur on the ground. And I wrote my application essay for Switzer, uh, for the first Switzer Environmental Fellowship uh, that I received. Uh, what I articulated was a desire to work on the boundaries between formal protected areas and human land use. I had spent a lot of time working for the National Park Service, Colorado Outward Bound School, and you know, loved and still love wilderness areas and national parks, but I realized, as so many others had, that none of those formal protected areas were going to be large enough in and of themselves to really sustain biodiversity and certainly not wide-ranging large mammals. And so uh, Lava Lake, after I'd worked for the Nature Conservancy, Lava Lake really presented me with a, an incredible opportunity to, to develop really practical solutions at a very large scale to that issue of how to integrate formal protected areas with land use. And Pioneer Mountain Group is now giving us a platform to do that work, not just in the Idaho or in the West, but also internationally. The, the central problem that uh, we have been working on is how to develop ways of producing meat, either lamb or beef uh, and wool, on uh, native rangelands that have high ecological values. And that in the, West, in the Western United States, that, has been the, that arena has been the source of tremendous conflict over the years, particularly in terms of public lands grazing. Uh, but there is clearly a way to produce the very kind of products that the marketplace, the customers around the United States are clamoring for, which is grass-fed, all-natural, and even organic, certified organic uh, lamb and beef. Um, and native rangelands are one of the best places to do that in many cases, uh, providing that there's, of course, sufficient forage and water uh, and other resources to do so. So trying to untangle the that challenge has been what we have really focused on at Lava Lake. With Lava Lake uh, Land and Livestock, uh, my partners and I, we had assembled five historic ranches uh, that totaled about 24,000 acres of private land and came with approximately 900,000 acres of uh, Bureau of Land Management and Forest Service grazing allotments. This is a sheep operation. Uh, the, it's a highly migratory sheep operation, so the sheep are traveling by foot about 125 miles from south to north during the course of the grazing season. And uh, there were two, uh, there were several issues. One was the lamb we were producing was grass-fed uh, and all-natural, meaning no added growth hormones or antibiotics. And we began our work in earnest in 2002, 2003, and began direct marketing our lamb under our own brand, Lava Lake Lamb, in about 2005, 2006. That coincided beautifully with Michael Pollan's book, Omnivore's Dilemma, and really the, the surge of interest in the local foods movement. And we were really able to capitalize on that. So that, uh, that journey for us was uh, really uh, interesting in that it was occurring at the same time that we were implementing a very comprehensive science and conservation program, both on our own uh, operation as well as across the Pioneer Mountains where we work. So Pioneer Mountain Group is, uh, we are a consulting firm. Uh, we actually are, one of our core projects uh, is as the coordinator of the Pioneers Alliance, which is a coalition of ranchers, conservationists, uh, elected and agency officials and local residents in central Idaho. Uh, over the last uh, three years, we've been successful in raising over $19 million uh, for conservation funding in Idaho, and we've protected um, over 53,000 acres of private lands uh, in the Pioneers. We've also been involved in economic development projects and wildlife science projects. What I am finding through our work, uh, both in the United States and abroad, is that there are some fundamental skills that are really required to have an impact on conservation at any sort of a meaningful scale, uh, whether this, you know, whether the meaningful scale is applied to the welfare of people, 
the well-being of people or you know the well-being of natural systems and and I think the you know Switzer Foundation does a good job of promoting these skills but I think those really those those key skills include an ability to work with really diverse groups of people, an ability to think in non-ideological ways, and the ability to draw from a lot of different disciplines in order to craft solutions that will work on the ground. And, and that, that process of working with people and developing solutions really is what I find incredibly exciting. Uh, and, uh, and there's a lot of need for it.